All right. So um, before we start, I'm going to show you a quick video that our ambassadors put together to explain a little bit about what we do here. The Montreal Centre for Learning Disabilities is a non-profit organization. Our mission is to provide support, understanding and resources to people of all ages affected by learning disabilities, ADHD and mild autism. For only $30 a year, you can benefit from discounts to programs and activities as well as numerous other advantages. Visit ldmontreal.ca for more details. Thanks for your support. So there you have it. That's our little video on what we do here. And we do rely on uh, memberships to keep us going. And you can easily get a membership at ldmontreal.ca. Uh, Sana, did you want to say anything before I start the video? Sana, you're muted if you're trying to talk. Okay, we'll, we'll assume she doesn't have anything else to add. So I'm going to start the video now. Hi, my name is Pam Wiener, and I am the Vice President of the Montreal Centre for Learning Disabilities. I am very pleased to be here today to present to you Linda Coranzalis board certified cognitive specialist who is the author of misnamed misdiagnosed misunderstood a new book on nonverbal learning disorders and other brain based challenges dr ned hallowell a psychiatrist world renowned expert on adhd and the new york times best selling author of Driven to Distraction says, Linda's book is vivid, compelling, full of heart and fresh understanding. Caranzalis replaces suffering with clarity and triumph for the millions of people with NVLD. Linda, who has NVLD and ADHD herself, has worked for more than 25 years with individuals of all ages with NVLD, ADHD, learning disabilities, and those on the autistic spectrum. As an author, podcaster, presenter, learning specialist, and ambassador for the NVLD project, she provides validation, awareness, solutions, strategies, and most importantly, compassion to the millions who live with neurodiversity. Find out more about her story and her book at www.lindacaranzales.com. You can buy her book on, on Amazon or you can purchase it NVLD Pioneers or Facebook support group. So, hi, Linda. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for the great introduction. Happy to be here. Well deserved. So, Linda, tell us what, what inspired you to write this book? Well, you know, I was grew up in a time where we barely know about NVLD now, but basically nothing was known and it was very painful it was very difficult to be different from everybody else and not know why not having no idea why and people getting mad at me thinking I was doing things on purpose and you know I obviously wasn't um, but it was a tough long road and so I wrote this book because this is the book that I wanted to have and I didn't want other people to suffer like I did so I kind of felt like a pioneer I say, because I was on uncharted territory and before I could help anyone, I had to help myself and I had to figure it out. I, I, I'm very passionate and I have a strong drive. 
And so that's what I did. And that's why I wrote the book. Um, and like I said, it's kind of like for me, a manual to life that I didn't get. So I want to give this manual to other people so that they can live um, and cope better and have their best life with NVLD. And it's, you know, it's, it's not just NVLD, like I have ADHD with it. Um, and some people have it alone with, with other um, neurodevelopmental disorders. Uh, I don't like to say disorders, but unfortunately we have to say that to identify it. Um, so I wanted to, uh, that's why I wrote it and um, to help people. Okay, so overall, I mean, you just told us part of it, but what is your your message to the My episode? message, like I said, is my, it comes from, um, it's unique because I am a board certified cognitive specialist, former special education teacher, and I also have these difficulties. So I come from a really unique perspective on like others um so that i can help them but my mate that's part of it and the other thing is like validation 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 just like you know real estate's location location <laughs> location uh, because these souls are walking around not knowing what is wrong unidentified thinking that it's you know it's invisible that it's their fault and there's a relief in knowing that it's not your fault and that okay this is what i have and i can move on now a lot of validation and with my experience, what I can do and what you can do, because I can't reach everybody that on a mass level, you know, how to help themselves. Okay. Well, um, I'm a humorous kind of person, so I'd like to know what is, would you consider the most humorous part of your book? Well, you know, I look at the foibles and the, and the things that happen and sometimes you just have to laugh at yourself because, you know, it's very stressful living with these uh, ADHD and NVLD. Very, very stressful uh, because it's kind of like you're putting fires out all day. So I just come up with little novel ways to, um, you know, help myself. And some of them are kind of crazy. Um, Can like you give an example? Wanna, yeah. Yeah. Like if I want to work out, um, I will, instead of laying my workout clothes, I'll sleep in my leggings <laughs> and what I'm going to wear to work out and my socks and everything. So I just have to roll out of bed, put the no sneakers way. on, you know. And when I was in college, you know, it's very hard to get up in the morning with ADHD because the brain doesn't really wake up till later. Because So uh, I would have every everything in my book bag ready and like some kind of like thing I could take with me to eat like a bar and I would just you know grab that book bag again sleep in what I was going to sleep in go to campus and act like I just came from the gym because I needed that time because the mornings are really stressful and transitions with executive <laughs> functioning so that's some of the, that's one of the crazy things I you know I've done and pretty I funny that's to do. pretty humorous yeah Okay, so could you please tell us what is NVLD and what does it look like in terms of strengths and weaknesses? Well, first of all, there's so little known about NVLD. I'll get into that in a second. But because it's not in the DSM, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Disorders, um, it's very difficult to identify it because the professionals are in different camps. No, it doesn't exist. Um, it's some say that it does, some diagnose, some don't, um, but it is very different um, than other disorders. And we're hoping that it's going to get into the um, DSM because researchers with the NVLD project have submitted um, a proposal and all their research proving that it's different to get in the DSM. So the difference is in the brains of people that have ADHD and those on the spectrum and the symptoms. A lot of the symptoms are the same but they're from different causes. A lot of the interventions will help uh, people that are on the spectrum, um, autism level one, ADHD, and other learning disabilities, a host of learning disabilities. But with NVLD, um, the visual spatial aspect is not, those interventions typically aren't going to help as much. 
Um, so it needs to get in the DSM. And that's why it's not really known. And the brain, they found that there, it's a right hemisphere weakness of the brain that connects to the left hemisphere. And um, so it's kind of like when you have uh, wires and they have that coating around them, you know, that that wears off the sheath around there and it's the connection. And you actually have sp smaller splenium. Now people on the spectrum, autism level one, they have, um, they're very good in visual spatial processing. So that's one of the differences. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what's going on with it, where it stands right now. But it is a visual spatial weakness and coming from the right hemisphere of the brain, which means a host of things not processing um, body language, tone of voice, gestures, um, unable to maybe identify. so it's social skills difficulties um, that's part of it and then it's knowing where your body is in space like um, I'm always bumping into things all the time it's um, true. <laughs> reading a map yeah <laughs> reading a map is impossible for me it's it's interpreting analyzing and making sense of what's coming in visually not that you and and how you can interpret it form opinions come to conclusions so you tend to see all the details but not putting them together and see the big picture um, so there's a lot of and math is usually very weak now not everybody fits this profile it's not a cookie cutter diagnosis it's like when you met one person with NVLD you've met one person so um, it's like anything it's else, also, a host of symptoms and a yeah, spectrum. Right, right. And so you're considered to be neurodivergent, which is newer terminology, which shows that we are getting to more an inclusive society because a lot of people are masking and pretending that they're neurotypical because neurotypical is, is the majority of the population who think, behave, and do things basically in the same way. If you're neurodivergent, which is, you know, a lot of these learning disorders and VLD, you do, you do think do things differently and behave differently, which typically isn't accepted because anytime the, the majority rules, I always say if we were in the majority, they would have the disorder. Um, so everybody's not going to think the same way. You can't teach everybody the same way. Um, and again, it's making sense of what the eyes see. Um, so strengths are very good at research, public speaking, exceptional vocabulary. What the diagnosis is, that's the hallmark of it is you have an above to uh, average to above average visual uh, verbal IQ. But there's a gap between your perceptional reasoning, um, which is an, your other IQ, there's two forms of IQ, there's a gap. And there's like so many points. It used to be, I believe, 15 points, but I don't know, the, you know, this, this criteria has changed, but it's a huge, it's a gap. So, um, and that's what's going to, you know, that verbal IQ performance, which is now perceptional reasoning, that VIQ, PIQ, they call it, the gap between there, which is going to really point to whether you have NVLD or not. So it is a different disorder. They typically have difficulties in executive functioning, which also goes with ADHD. Again, right. it's very stressful because you're like today, you know, I had my notes. And, you know, I leave things all over the place, could not find them for the life of me. I usually trace where my steps were. I went in the bathroom because I thought, let me take you to the bathroom and do makeup and stuff, and I'll glance at them. And um, looking all over the place, and we're supposed to meet, they had fallen into the sink and, you know, were wet. Now, when these things happen, okay, we all do the neurotypicals do these things. But it's, and so they tend to like discount and invalidate because it's an invisible disorder. Okay, so, but they may do those things, but they don't nearly do them. It's not as chronic, pervasive, and hitting every aspect of life. So a lot it's of times you're seen as lazy. Long. No, it's not all day long. And the stress is incredible. So they, they don't, a lot of people do not validate it. Now, What's interesting is our medical, it's a stigma because 
But if you're in a wheelchair, people will accommodate you because they can see it. They're not likely to accommodate you. I mean, I'm well-spoken, look at me. Do I look like I need accommodations? No. Um, I don't have two heads. You know, I'm not in a wheelchair with, with, you know, the majority of the population of, you know, people with NVLD and these invisible disorders. So you're not gonna get as much help as if it were visible, but the medical is respected. So you can't see somebody's pancreas if, if they're having trouble with that. You can't see that somebody has diabetes. You can't see a heart condition, but they get recognized and that's okay. But this isn't recognized, anyone with that's neurodivergent. So a lot of people are masking and pretending to be neurotypical. And that is very stressful because you're not really truly being yourself. So we say that the population of NVLD, almost 3 million people under the age of 18 in the United States and Canada, um, either half of those are undiagnosed or misdiagnosed with ADHD, and then they're on medication that does nothing for NVLD, and, yeah. or, or they remain undiagnosed, or they're not getting any treatment because of the diagnosis isn't in the DSM. So a lot of them are getting the autistic label just to get that recognition. And I was, you know, just in my uh, Facebook group, NVLD and Neurodivergent Pioneers, um, someone was just saying, I feel like, you know, I have to pretend that I'm something else to get the recognition and the acceptance. And even, even when you're on the spectrum, you're not getting much of it anyway if you're masking very well. So it's, you know, very misunderstood misnamed and misdiagnosed which is the book because it's misnamed because the first thing people are like is nonverbal learning disorder i've had teachers say to me well you talk you're very ver verbal but it's nonverbal communication that so the proposed that you're not getting and it's very when you're not understanding what people are saying you know they may not uh understand that you are you know as intelligent as you are well, we touched a bit upon it this, but I was going to ask if you can give us an example that affected your negative everyday life. I mean, would you like to expand on that? Um, or well, you, move along? <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of depression and anxiety goes with it because you're not it's it's not you're not validated, and so when you're not understanding what people are saying, or you're not getting jokes and you're kind of faking it where you're not getting what they're saying. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of heartbreaking because not, there's many different studies, but one of them is, is that 93% of communication is nonverbal. Only 7% is verbal. You're only getting 7%, so you're gonna be literal. It could be embarrassing because you're very right. literal because the nonverbal communication changes the complete meaning of the verbal words. So people, um, you know that can you imagine what that's like it's like you're walking on jello you don't know do they like me do they not like me should i leave should i not leave should how should i should i do this or should i do that um should i tell them i don't understand or not what are they going to think it's constant anxiety there's a lot of anxiety through the roof with it um so the, those are i mean there's a lot of examples in the book of situations um, that, of course, now off the top of my head, I can't think of them. I have examples in there. Um, and then I have examples of my clients, um, like profile composite. And, um, you know, one of the things is um, like with the tulip story, um, that's a big thing in my book and that's on my website. When I knew something was wrong um, was when I picked all my mom, my mom's from Holland, and so she loves flowers and we had tulips and I picked them at the tops of the heads and I gave them to her. And, you know, she really wasn't happy, but I did not pick up on the nonverbal communication. She was just like, I went by her words. Well, we're okay. I like them better in the ground. She was being positive, but I'll have, I'll put these in bowls around the house because I wanted to please her. And so she thought I understood it was, it, you know, you're not supposed to do that. The next day I finished the job off. And I got in trouble because she was like, you know, you know, you're not supposed to do this, blah, 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 and I got in trouble. Um, and I felt ashamed because I was, I knew something was wrong. And then my father, 
um, would always say, you ask a lot of questions because people with NVLD ask a ton of questions because they're, again, they're not getting it. And words are our world. So that's how we're, we're coping. Like you're wearing eyeglasses, you know? Um, and so I would ask a ton of questions and people don't like it when you ask them questions. They feel that you're challenging them. I mean, I have strategies for all this. So uh, I was very gullible. And one time in school, and, and, and it's like, you should know these things. Like my mom thought I was old enough to pick up on that. So like, I guess, you, and you're socially and emotionally behind. So you, you could be, be like 20 and be on the level of like a 15 year old. And that's the same with ADHD because it's neurodevelopmental. And I guess I might've been almost in high school and somebody was saying that somebody was bothering them. This is in the book. And they were gonna hang them from their toes. Uh, another kid said that, and I was like, oh my God, I better not, you know, ever like piss this kid off because I don't want that to happen to me. Not, not picking up on the tone of voice and being literal and you're laughing. It sounds funny, but it's not funny. I'm, and that's not to make you feel I'm bad. I'm sure it you were funny. really scared of this guy. I was really scared. Year. And this contributes to anxiety. I mean, there's other examples in the book. Um, and this is what people with NVLD go through. Um, and Chris Rock recently diagnosed a couple years ago. And since he's got slapped at the Oscars, you know, the, the awareness is through the roof and the Google searches have gone up. So we're hoping that he's bringing awareness to it. But so there's, there's all different kinds of examples in the book. Okay. Um, speaking about your book, where can people find your book and more about you? Actually, I have to say the- Can we the, see it? Is it nearby? It's phenomenal. <laughs> it's just been, it's changed Hold it my life. Higher. Okay, here it is. Um, and to have Ned Hallowell endorse it, you know, I didn't dream that researchers, a couple of researchers from Columbia endorsed it. Ned Hallowell in the beginning of the book, nor a psychologist. Sari um, Solden. Sari Solden, who was groundbreaking for neurodivergent women with ADHD. Um, Dr. Mooney, who is very abreast of it. He's out of Vermont. Um, you know, there's it's all in the book. Uh, the people are going to my um in my pioneers group they're they're just holding up pictures of the book they're starting to put them up on the public page this has I just changed haven't my life. gotten there yet but i will <laughs> the validation that they're feeling and they're just now it's if you go on amazon the reviews are phenomenal they're all five stars parents are buying them maybe five or six they're giving them to the child study team to the teachers to family members um, it's more than I ever dreamed of because I live for this and this is my passion. I, you know, this is my cause and I don't want anybody to suffer. Thank you, so Linda. it feels really, really good. Kudos very to well you, received. Linda. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Now, you mentioned the NVLD project. Uh, what is your connection to, to the NV, NVLD project? Well, their primary focus is to get this in the DSM. My connection is as an ambassador um, is to do NVLD awareness because that's what we need. So speaking out, you know, and talking about it um, to get out in the media, uh, things like that. Yeah, well, that was actually how I found you, Linda, was I uh, was looking at uh, the NVLD project and then um saw a youtube video of you talking about your new book and i said oh i have to have one of those yeah i have a lot of youtube videos i have a podcast i get a lot of good feedback from that um because the book is not clinical it's it's got some science in it it's got stories in it it's got strategies in it it's anybody could pick this up and read it um so yeah, a lot of people resonate with what I have to say. And so they're feeling less alone, you know. Okay, um, I think the only thing I missed which was terribly, not terribly important, just a curiosity. 
Do women suffer more from NVLD than men? No, Amy Margolis has done a study on that and it's a one-to-one -one ratio between male and females. Okay, so it's um, not like- uh, ADHD, right. Okay, we're which boys. we're not sure of anyways because we don't know how many undiagnosed females there are. Right, and with ADHD, that's another point where the difference is, is that's, that's a lack of brain chemicals like serotonin and dopamine. That's the cause of that, even though they have difficulties in the, from the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is in common with NVLD, it's also like a neurochemical problem. Um, and, well, that leads me to a question, Linda. Is it easier to assess ADD than NVLD? Like oh, yeah, because it's not in the DSM. And like I said, there, there's tons of misdiagnosed people with ADHD. But I mean, you include a checklist. Oh yeah, I have in your book. Yes, and I remember that you really identified with. Yes, very much so, and uh, it's just like there's no real test for ADD either. I mean, it's a lot of observational. So it's observational. In it's also you can look at the executive functioning skills and see where where they are. But I put in the book, I have a screening, I have a questionnaire for adults, This because this book is for all ages, because I did not want to leave adults out of it. And parents really like that because they are seeing what they're headed for. And, you know, so by reading it and doing this, you can take it to a clinician. I put it in the front of the book, because usually these things are in the back of the book, but because so little is known right in the beginning to see if this is something that you're struggling with. Um, so there's a check that it's like the domains, the areas that are affected, and then it's like into these screenings that you can take somewhere like for it to it because you have to have a diagnostician, you know, and you have to find one that understands it. Knows about it. And I think it, that, right. that checklist in itself is not only good for the person who is reading it. But as you said, to educate the professionals Absolutely. who don't know that much about it, at least you can go with this checklist and say, here are all my behaviors, and this is what I believe they are. Right. Well, that's a good point, too, because you could take that to a diagnostician, but you have to make sure they understand MLD. And I'm having people have the therapist read the book because therapy, and that was one of the things that messed me up. Nobody really believed me that I struggled. I mean, I was teaching, you know, and well, you're fine. Even the therapist. And, and if you can get, if you get the wrong, most therapists aren't aware of neurodivergent difficulties. And it can be misdiagnosed as borderline personality disorder because of the anxiety and the things that you're struggling with. Um, so there's a section on therapy because if the therapist doesn't understand it, it could do more damage than good. So it's how to find a therapist and what works, what doesn't work. And so a lot of uh, people are giving it to therapists as well. I'm going well, to it, I, it Choosing a therapist that understands is important, I believe, whether you have ADD or NVLD, because um, we know too well that women are being misdiagnosed with depression instead of ADD. And so they're being put on antidepressants right. instead of stimulants, which is exactly the wrong thing for them. So right. here you are repeating the same thing all over again. Well, and especially if you're ADHD, it can cause depression if you know, you're identified because you're not productive. You're putting fires out all day. You're going to get depressed. So right. if you're on an antidepressant, it's it's a byproduct of it, unless it's genetically runs in your family depression, but it's going to cause depression. Absolutely. Because life is a struggle. Life's a struggle, you, you know, and um, people hide it. They hide it. And internalizing it is not particularly good for you. No because you kind of feel like you're dumb or stupid or it's your fault. Now in the book, I have- Oh, um, I meant physically for you your do. health. Yeah. Not for only your mental health. 
Exactly. Because you can get ulcers. Like I had gotten, I became school phobic. Um, so there's a mind, body, spirit chapter, what you can do. There's also, it talks about strategies. That's when you had contacted me, you had heard about the strategies. I mean, <clears throat> executive functioning is a big buzzword now, but it's nothing yes. new. It's been around for years and years and years and years. And it's all about um, using your strengths, which is good, but it's not enough. You have to build those weaknesses up because if you're in, in school and you're like in 10th grade and you're on a sixth grade reading level, they're not going to work on that or uh, no. now, you know, or whatever in math because the, well, they will, you have an IP, but you never seem to catch up. So you really have to work on the true executive functioning skills, which are not accommodations. They're working on long-term memory, active working memory, um, auditory, visual processing with NVLD. So if these things aren't addressed and remediated, the accommodations aren't going to do anything. And I, to be honest with you, by the time kids get to high school, they don't want accommodations. They're burned out because, you know, they're not being, they have to conform to what everybody else wants. And they're, and that's hard. And they're like, I color coding my books, using a timer. I mean, by the time they get there, they know that, you know, they're tired that it's not going to really, it'll help a little bit. Now, after you remediate this, the strategies will help much better and you'll be able to use them. So when you when you work on these executive functioning skills, uh, it's kind of like driving is automatic, cruise control is automatic, like I do needlepoint is automatic. You're not thinking about like, let me put my you know hand on the steering wheel, let me turn it, it's just automaticity. And you're thinking about, you know, oh, this is my grocery list. So, <clears throat> You know, it's called um, brain training, but you have to be careful because there's a lot of programs out there that, you know, they'll take your money and it's not going to do anything. So it has to be done the right way. And you, you speak know, to that. In your, you, I know you speak to that in your book. Yeah. And that's what I do with people with a lot of parent training as well, um, because you don't get a manual for a kid like, like this. And parents are at a loss as to what can I do? And a lot of kids are acting out and getting misdiagnosed as oppositional defiant disorder. But if you were struggling that much and all the adults around you were expecting you to do things and not recognizing why you can't do them, you know, you get a chip on your shoulder and you go into self-protection mode and, um, you know, because you're misunderstood. But there yeah, are well, because I... There are things that you can do, you know, and that, that's the great thing about it. Yeah, it must be. I mean, I know it's difficult because people you present as super intelligent because you speak so well and you have such you good vocabulary. Very good. Speakers. And then people look mm -hmm. at you and they they don't understand what's the matter with you. Why can't you do this? It's so right. simple. And it's, it's kind of like I forget one of the researchers said this. It's you know what? It's not what's wrong with you. It's what happened to you. And then you go into this all post-traumatic stress, you know, because of the way that you're being treated. You know, I've been shamed by teachers and that's why I became a teacher. Um, so then and all this manifests in the body and, you know, you can have a lot of, you know, PTSD, which is a byproduct what? problem of trying to conform in society, you know? of coping with it. So that's a shame. That's why we need awareness. So we don't have oh. to damn like Ned Hallowell had said when one of the reviews on Amazon that this book will save you years in advance. And Dr. Mooney said that because if now you're going to have the awareness, you're not going to have downward spirals that are going to affect the rest of your life because right. And that's what the book's doing for a lot of people. Well, Linda, um, from a personal standpoint, I have to say, I thank you for writing this book. And uh, But I'd like to say to our audience out there that um, it's a wonderful book that Linda has written. Um, if you think that you might possibly have nonverbal learning disorder or your child 
or someone you know, I would definitely recommend getting Linda's book just for going through the checklist and then reading it through for the rest for the strategies and the and the understanding but it is really comprehensive and it put the pieces of my life uh in perspective and i thank you very much for that linda and i thank you for being here today and sharing this with our audience i mean we need to get this information out there and that's what the mcld does we disseminate the most current up-to-date information um, to help uh, parents and kids who are struggling with learning differences and neurodivergency. So thank you once again, and we hope um, we'll have you back again. Yeah, and I just wanted to say for the awareness, you can go to my website, everything is all the social media is on there and the, the support group not it only helps NVLD, but people that are just neurodivergent. So all that stuff is on my website, and um, that's just my name, if you can spell it. it it's a mouthful. <laughs> it's lindacaranzalis.com. And then it, oh, there's a link to my learning center on that site as well, what you can do about it. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And since Linda's put her book out, her, uh, she's been inundated with uh, requests. So um, that's why she wrote the book. Because that's why she I wrote the book. <laughs> she can't help all the people that want her help. But there's something that's going to be coming that um, that I'm working on. It's going to help a lot Let's more people. surprise them. I will talk about that. Yes. Okay. Okay, thanks, thanks again, Anna. I'm giving the opportunity. Day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Linda. So uh, that was a pre-recorded um, video that Pam and Linda did, I think, last week. Yes. Yeah, it was last week, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, did you want to talk about this a bit, Sana? No, uh, to be honest, I want to thank uh, Linda Karanzalis for this interview with our own Pam Wiener. Uh, bringing awareness to NVLD is so important to our community and to society at large. I believe her book will help many people out there. And thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. I'm going to just play that video that I played earlier. Thank you, Sherry. Um, uh, just to remind everybody that to go to ldmontreal.ca and uh, look at the kinds of benefits you can have. Uh, which one is it? I don't know. Oh, no, this is the, the same thing I just showed you. So we're not going to show this to you again. The Montreal Centre for Learning Disabilities is a non-profit organization. Our mission is to provide support, understanding and resources to people of all ages affected by learning disabilities, ADHD and mild autism. For only $30 a year, you can benefit from discounts to programs and activities as well as numerous other advantages. Visit ldmontreal.ca for more details. Thanks for your support. All right, so I am going to stop the recording. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you got something out of it. This will be available on our website, and I'm not sure yet if it's going to be for members only or not. You'll have to go check that out. So thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you, Karen. Thank you.